Before we delve into the word on today, I'd like to first start with a story. It's a true story. It's an interesting story. I stumbled upon this story because I was in the, in the midst of some real estate transactions and I was trying to reach the owner of a particular property and I looked it up and I was intrigued by the name. The man's name was Luza. Luza Lane was the man's name. And I thought to myself, could this be right? Could the man's name be Luza? Who would name their child Luza? Who would curse their child with such a name? As to set up circumstances and to make it seem as if their fate held nothing but despair. Mm. I found, as I looked it up, I found an article in the Chicago Tribune, dated July 31st, 2002. And it's titled, In the Name Game, Loser Wins and Brother Winner Loses. One son was named Loser. The other one. This is true. One became a cop and eventually was promoted to detective. Shield number 2762. The other fell into a life of small time crime, racking up at least 31 arrests before being sent away to a two year stretch in state prison. Inmate number 00R2807. But for the Brothers Lane, it wasn't a case of their unique names that sealed their fate. One is quoted with saying, I went to a totally separate route in life from the start. This is Loser speaking at age 41. He's a, he was at the time a detective working in the 40th precinct in the South Bronx of New York City. Loser was a star student in school. Loser was a star athlete in school. He actually went to an elite prep school called Pomfrey in Connecticut on scholarship. And then to Lafayette College in Pennsylvania. Then he joined the police force, he says, because my mama really wanted me to. Mm -hmm. Winner, however, winner's life had gone the other way. At the time, he was 44 during the interview. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of jail in June of that year, after spending two years in Southport Prison in Elmira, New York, for breaking into a car, mm -hmm. he sometimes lived in Camp LaGuardia, a homeless shelter in upstate New York. Shuttling back and forth between the camp and the city, trying to get his life on track. Why did he commit so many crimes? He's quoted with saying, it's just some situations I found myself in. Winner said, it wasn't really for the need. I really didn't need to do what I needed to do, or what I did rather, but I did it because I was just in that situation, following the crowd. Guilty by association. He declined to talk further about his trouble with the law. So the interview tried to interview him and he, he didn't want to say no more. The brothers rarely see each other now. One lives in Spartanburg, South Carolina as we speak. The other is still up in New York trying to get it together. Winner will call loser when he needs some money but they're no longer close. I'm a cop, said Loser, who is known on the job as Lou. And I have a way with me where I don't tolerate a lot. That's what, that's what Loser said. The Lane boys ran in the same circles growing up in Harlem in the Harlem Wagner Projects. Their names never arouse even curiosity, much less ridicule, from the kids in the neighborhood, surprisingly. Loser says, when you're young, you don't know that it's a bad name. And by the time you hit grade school, everybody knows you and it's a regular thing. 
The story of how Loser got his name is simple. One day he was born, their father Robert asked his daughter, Danita, what to name the new baby. My dad comes home and asks my older sister what to name me. She said, well, we got a winner. Why don't we have a loser? And there you go. That was it. This is a true story. Mm -hmm. Winner Lane said he's not sure how he got his name. Because their father was a baseball fanatic and semi-pro player, Winner said he thinks it has something to do with baseball, but he's not sure. In any case, by adolescence, the, the lives of Winner and Loser started down two different routes and divergent paths. As divergent as their names. Around the time Loser entered prep school on a scholarship, Winner began his descent into the criminal justice system. He was first arrested at age 19 in September 1977 on a charge of recklessly causing physical injury. His first conviction came five years later, a burglar case in Long Island, and then a steady stream of arrests followed, domestic violence, car burglaries, trespassing, resisting arrest, and at least nine arrests for jumping subway turnstiles. That's a thing up north, they jump the turnstile so you don't have to pay. In April 1999, he was arrested for breaking into the car weeks after serving 135 days for another auto burglary. This time when he pleaded out, the judge gave Winner one and a half to three years. But after graduating from college where he played football and wrestled, Loser joined the New York Police Department in 1984. True story about two brothers, one named Winner and one named Loser. One seemed to be blessed and one seemed to be cursed, but it had nothing to do with their names. And so as we enter into the book of Psalms, I want to land on the psalm that tells you how to be blessed. And today the title of the message is The Way of Blessing. You see, there's really only two paths in life. You've got the way that God blesses, and then you've got your own way. I said you got the way that God blesses, and then you have your way. And what I found in life and in ministry is that oftentimes when people pray, they want God to bless their way. They want God to bless whatever it is that they're doing. They want him to jump on board with their plans and their agenda and bless it. I want you to know that God don't work like that. God has his own plans. Yes. God has his own agenda. Yes. And God has his own purposes for your life. Yes. yes. And if you want to be blessed, the best thing you can do is as quickly as you can find out what God wants and get busy doing it. Amen. <laughs> Rather than asking God to bless what you're doing, Get busy doing what God is blessing. Praise God. Psalm 1 is an interesting psalm because it comes as an introduction to the book of Psalms, which we can tell just from the content that it's a praise book. It's a hymn book. It is Israel's song book. Everybody needs a song in their heart. Amen. And if you ain't got a song in your heart, go get a book with some songs in it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Praise God. If you ain't got a book with some songs in it, then just open your Bible right to the middle and right smack dab in the middle of your Bible is the book of Psalms. Yes. And you can find something somewhere in the book of Psalms to identify with. Mm -hmm. One of the most wonderful things about the book of Psalms is that the book of Psalms expresses the emotion of the believer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the emotions aren't altogether right, but it expresses the emotion nonetheless. Psalm 1 is an interesting psalm because unlike the other psalms, it's not designed like a psalm. It's more designed like wisdom literature. Wisdom literature, if you remember, is like the book of Job or the book of Proverbs or Ecclesiastes. 
These books are called wisdom literature because they give you wisdom on how to get along in life in a way that pleases God. Mm -hmm. They give you wisdom. They don't make you clever, they give you wisdom. If you're clever, you'll get over on people. If you're wise, you'll get on with God. If you're clever, you'll get over on your brother and your sister and your You'll, you'll, you'll trick people out of what's rightfully theirs. But when you are blessed of God, you'll get on with life and everything you do will be blessed. Amen. Everything you encounter will be blessed. The Bible says so much so that he'll make you rich and add no song. Amen. Book of Psalm is laid out like wisdom literature because it clearly shows that you gotta, you gotta walk, the, walk and talk the talk. You gotta Choose the right path in life. And this isn't something that you just say you choose, but you actually have to walk it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I thought it was strange that this was like wisdom literature when it was the introduction to the book of Psalms. But I realized the Holy Ghost let me know that you can't praise God until you're on the right path. Amen. Yes. Amen. You see, so often people come to church and I feel so sorry for them because they aren't praising God and they don't have the joy of the Lord in their life. And I, I wonder what could be wrong when the when the spirit is high and the anointing is flowing and every and the praise is high and everybody else is getting, but you have those individuals that can't seem to enter into a praise. Amen. But what the Lord let me know is that you can't praise when you're on the wrong path. Yes. That's why even though they're commanded to, the Bible says that everything that has breath praise God, but sinners don't typically praise God. Mm -hmm. Folk who don't want to live right don't typically praise God. Mm -hmm. Folk who don't want to do right don't typically praise God because they can. Mm -hmm. It's hard to praise God when you're on the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Next time the praise is going forth. Next time, everybody is joined together and lifting up the Lord. Mm -hmm. Next time, two or three are gathered and Jesus is in the midst and you can't find a praise on your lips. Mm -hmm. You might want to check yourself Amen. Amen. to see if you're on the right path or not. Mm -hmm. Maybe your hands ain't going up because your feet are planted in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Let us proceed. Psalm 1, reading from the King James Version, reads like this. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Lord have mercy. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. <laughs> the ungodly are not so. Well, like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Lord have mercy. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of his Amen. holy word. Psalm 1 lets us know right off that the righteous prosper and the wicked perish. Yes. And there is no in-between. Yes. There is no middle ground. Mm. There is no demilitarized zone. Either you're on the Lord's side or you're not. Mm. You are either for him or you're against him. Amen. Now that's a hard reality for most folk because most folk who aren't against Jesus feel like they're good people. But Jesus himself said that you are for me, you are against me. You see? And so, Psalm 1 paints a picture of two different paths. The path that is for God 
and the path that's against God. And let me explain something to you. You don't have to be a Satanist. You don't have to be one who's killing folk. You don't have to be anybody who's doing anything that's obnoxiously wrong in the earth to be on the path of the wicked. We all find ourselves on the path of the wicked. Yes. We all find ourselves in the, in the kingdom of darkness. We all find ourselves having conversation or engaging in those things that we should not engage in at some point or another. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. But we've got to make a choice. We got to choose whether or not to continue to try to bless ourselves or whether or not to do it God's way and let him bless us. You have a choice on today. The Bible says blessed is the man. That word blessed means happy, content, joyful, satisfied. Is that right? Blessedness speaks of a deep satisfaction in your soul. That even if everything in your life ain't going right, you have the satisfaction of knowing that you're right with God. Even if things ain't working out the way you want them to right now, you have the comfort of knowing that God's going to work it all out after a while. Praise yeah. God. The Bible says that you are blessed. Now here's something interesting. Usually... When the Bible makes a statement, it makes a positive statement. It makes a direct statement. But this statement is contrary. It says that the man is blessed not for what he does, but for what initially he don't do. Yes. What that tells me is that in life, if you want to be blessed, you've got to choose to go against the grain. Yes. What that tells me is that where you start and who you're around may not be where you end up and who you end up with. Amen. What that tells me is that even though your name might be loser, you've got to make some choices like you a winner. Do y'all hear me? You've got to go contrary to where you find yourself. Yeah. The Bible says, blessed is the man who does not, that walk of not. And so the first thing you got to do if you want to be blessed is realize what you ain't doing. The first thing you got to do is, is identify the difference between right and wrong. Yes. And you got to acknowledge that there's a, that we find ourselves, before we were saved, we find ourselves in a place where everything that we're doing seems all right to us. But it ain't right with God. Amen. Amen. We walk out the counsel of people who are ungodly. Mm -hmm. We walk out the counsel of what the school system says. We walk out the counsel of what mama and them say. We walk out the counsel of what the people in the neighborhood say. Mm -hmm. We walk out the counsel of what the media says, and ain't none of them God. Mm -hmm. And we, we, instead of walking in the light of God's word, we walk in darkness, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Until Jesus shines the glorious light of the gospel in your heart, mm -hmm. you're walking in darkness. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when he does shine it, if you refuse to walk in it, you are still walking in darkness. Mm. That's why you got some saved folk right now who, though they may have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're still walking in darkness. Mm. They're still following after the wrong counsel. They're still making decisions the way they used to without consulting God. Yes. So the first thing the Bible says isn't what to do, but what not to do. Amen. Because when we are born, we are born in sin. In sin, our mothers conceive us. We are born into sin. We are slaves unto sin. We are Amen. born in the kingdom of darkness. Yes. And God has to come and rescue us. And the first thing you got to do is get in your spirit what you ain't going to do. You got to get in your spirit that you ain't going to be led blinded by the devil no more. Amen. Amen. You got to get in your spirit that you ain't going to just take whatever scraps the devil throw at you no more. Amen. You got to get in your spirit that you're going to be different than anything you've ever seen in your life. Maybe nobody else has been blessed, but you're going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. 
Do you hear me? Yes. The first thing you got to get in your spirit is what you ain't going to do. Mm. You see, we talk a lot about what people should do. But sometimes you got to flip the script, and Psalm 1 flips the script on you, and the first thing it says is what you can't do. As a blessed person, you can't walk in counsel of ungodly people. Mm. That don't mean that if the doctor ain't saved, you can't listen to the doctor. That don't mean that if the lawyer ain't saved, you can't listen to the lawyer. That don't mean that the mechanic ain't saved, you ain't going to listen to what the mechanic says. But all that means is that before you get any counsel from anybody else, you're going to get counsel from God. That's right. And if God say don't fool with that doctor, don't matter what kind of credentials that doctor got, don't you fool with that doctor. Amen. 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 And if God say plead guilty because you know you are, don't matter what the lawyer telling you to plead, you go ahead and do what God said. Amen. Amen. And you're going to be blessed for it. Amen. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. You, you put God before everybody else. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of ungodly. Mm. Who are you listening to? Who's the greatest influence in your life? God. Everybody wants to say God, but do you listen to God more than you listen to the television? Do you listen to God more than you listen to the radio? Do you listen to God in psalms and spiritual hymns more than you do to the rap, jap, crap out there that's in your ears telling you all kinds of negativity to bring you down? Mm. Who are you listening to on today? Because mm. whoever you're listening to is their counsel that you will walk in. Mm. Blesses that man who don't walk in ungodly counsel. And there's a progression here. First you start walking with him, but then you stand with him. Noah, stand in the way of sinners. Not only is the counsel ungodly that you're walking in, now you done move to the place where you stand with sinners. You take your stand. You make your mark. You argue to the hill for something wrong. You know it's wrong because the Bible says it's wrong, but the world says it's right. Mm -hmm. I could just name it. I could just go down the list of all kinds of foolishness that the world says is right, but God says is wrong. Whose counsel are you taking? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to stand with? Are you going to stand with God for righteousness or are you going to stand with the world because it's popular? Nor sit up in the seat of the scorn. You see, you've got to be courageous to go against the crowd. Mm. That's why the Bible says over and over, be bold and courageous. And it ties that courage to meditating on the word of God. Yes. Because what you got to understand is everybody around you is going to pressure you to conform to them. Yes. But the Bible says, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the word of God. The word of God has to get in your heart and your mind and change you or you will go with the crowd. Yes. And let me tell you something, beloved. Well, we want to accept it or not, Jesus doesn't let us know that narrow is the way. Mm -hmm. I said narrow yes. is the way that leads to life. Yes. And there are few that find it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But wide is the way. Yes. And broad is the way. Huh? And there'll be a whole lot of people on their way to hell. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't careful about where you take your counsel, if you ain't careful about who you standing and sitting with and where you make yourself comfortable, mm -hmm. you will find yourself in the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, the crowd just seek comfort. We talk about blessing, but but so many people, I, some people just say, I just, I just, and they think they're being humble by saying, I just want to be happy. Mm -hmm. I don't ask for what your life, I just want to be comfortable. But if you ain't careful, your comfort, your desire for comfort will kill your destiny. Mm -hmm. Your desire for comfort will kill your destiny. Mm -hmm. Your desire for comfort, sitting on your behind, being entertained will kill the precious gift of life that God gave you and the moments he invested in you. Mm -hmm. 
that you should be doing something productive with your life. Jesus asked one very important question that you need to ask yourself all the time. What does it profit a man? What does it profit you to do what you do? What does it profit you to do it the way you do it? What does it profit you to agree with the peer pressure, go along with the crowd, and ignore the Holy Ghost that's been trying to draw you in another direction? Mm. What does it profit you today? You see, Loser was in New York City. His older brother, you see, Winner was three years older than him, was already running with the wrong crowd. But Loser had a significant other in his ear. He had one somebody. You know, in science, they te teach you, in sociology, they teach you about a theory of significant other. The theory of significant other goes like this. That if you find somebody, even in adverse, at-risk circumstances, regardless of how bad they are, or how, how bad off they are, how bad the situation is, or who they're around, if they got them one somebody who believes in them, who speaks life in them, who encourages them, that the chances of them making it has skyrocketed out to the moon. Mm. If you just got one somebody speaking life in you, that significant other can turn the tide in your life. Yes, yes. I don't know if you know us or not, but loser did just what mama wanted him to. Mm. When it don't make no mention of mama. Mm. Mama wasn't significant enough in winner's life to drown out the crowd's voice, to drown out the waywardness voice, to drown out what everybody else was doing. And if you ain't careful, God's voice won't be loud enough in your life. God won't be significant enough in your life to drown out what the devil in the world is trying to get you to go along with. Amen. The boy said he didn't even need what he was still. He just got caught up. Yes. And there's some good people going to hell because they caught up. Yes. I'm going to say that again. There are good people going to hell because they caught up. Yes. They caught up in the voices of the world telling them that they can live the way the world is living and it'll be all right. They're caught up with the notion that just because they shook the preacher's hand that they're going to heaven and everything's going to be all right. And they're caught up in a lie. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. See, when you, when you get good and comfortable with doing wrong, you will start making fun of everything right. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Be careful with these comedians making fun of the Christians. Mm -hmm. Yes. Be careful of these comedians making fun of your Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't you laugh and go along with everybody making fun of the pillar of the truth. Come on. Yeah. The pillar and foundation of the truth is being ridiculed yes. in the airway. And the spirit that's behind it is not simple comedy. It's a satanic attack on your soul. Because yes. if Satan can get you scornful, mm -hmm. if Satan can get you mocking the people of God and the things of God, there ain't no hope for you. Mm -hmm. Because God still uses his people. Oh, yes. they may not be perfect. Yes. They might not have it all together, yes. but that's the vehicle God chooses to use. Yes. And when you start to disrespect and make fun of the very thing that God is using to save you, mm. you're in a world of trouble. Yes. That's right. yes. Yes. For there's no more hope for you. If you crucify a fresh Jesus, mm. there is no more sacrifice mm. for your sin. Life is a serious thing. People live it so haphazardly, but life is a serious thing. God will put you in either one or two categories. You are either going to be considered a sheep or a goat. That's right. Yes. <laughs> and goats are notorious for being rebellious. Yes. Goats are notorious for being stubborn. Yes. 
And God says that when the harvest comes, you see, God likens life to a harvest. He sows some seed, he plants some stuff, he invests this in you and this in you and gives you a little bit of time to work it out. But there's going to come a day, and it's coming quite soon, when he's going to return and take account of what he planted. Mm. And when he finds something that he didn't plant, it, he's going to uproot it and cast it away. Amen. When he finds folk that act more like goats than sheep, He's going to put them on the side and put them away. He's not going to, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You better make sure that you know Jesus. You better make sure that the spirit you got is the Holy Spirit. You better make sure that you are right with God and that your life is on the right path. Yes. Now that don't mean you ain't going to experience no bumps in the road, but at least you're going in the right direction. Praise God. And the Bible says that his delight, this blessed man, don't let nobody tell you there ain't no emotion in serving God. Yes. The Bible says your delight, you can't have delight without emotion. Yes. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Yes. Now that might sound strange to some people because they think about the Bible and they think about the law. And how can you find delight in that? I ain't no bookworm. I ain't all up in the Bible like the pastor. How you find delight in that? Well, let me tell you how to find delight in it. When you, when you hear a word of God, when you read a word of God, and you receive it. Yes. When you receive it's like a sweet seed going in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. It'll speak things to you and comfort you and encourage you in ways that nothing else in this world can. Amen. And when you receive God's word, it'll, it'll, it'll make you happy. It'll bring joy to your life, even in the midst of the worst circumstances you can find yourself. And so that's why we love the Lord. That's why we love the law of the Lord. That's why we love the word of God. Because he sent his word and it healed us. You see, the word, just one word from God mm, can do more for you than 10 years of therapy. Yes, yes. Just one word yes. from God can do more for you than all the prescriptions in the world. Just one word mm -hmm. from the Lord can do more for you than winning the lottery. Yes. One word. Yes, yes. And see, the blessed man, the blessed woman understands this, and so they delight in the Lord. See, if you can get God to say something to your situation, mm. it's as good as done. God don't write bounce checks. Yes. Every word of God comes to pass. He watches over it to make sure it does. Yes, yes, yes. And so when you realize that and you take God at his word and faith starts to mix with the word of God in your life, then your delight is in the law of the Lord. You can't wait to hear a word from God. You can't wait for God to open his mouth. If you hadn't heard a word from God in a while, your soul starts to dry up from the inside. Mm. You start to get a little sad and life starts to get a little boring to you. You see, people get it completely backwards. They think that if you're living in the world and give your life to God, your life will become boring. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is you ain't start to live till you live for Jesus. Yes. 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 I don't know nobody. I'm going to say this again. And I know a lot of people. But I don't know nobody who has ever told me that serving God hadn't worked out for them. Yeah. I don't know nobody who said that once I received Jesus, I wish I would have went back. Everybody I know, every single person I yes. know from the moment they met Jesus, yes. they don't want to turn back. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm. They were looking for love in all the wrong places, but when they found their Savior. Hallelujah. They was trying to find satisfaction, trying to find life, trying to find whatever kind of joy or thrill they could find. But when they found Jesus, Amen, Jesus. they were unsatisfied until they found the Come on, come on yes. I don't know nobody. Every, every, every drug facility, every rehab facility, huh? Every church, every, 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 every uh, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, every Celebrate Recovery meeting. I've heard them all say that they're so glad that when they fell in love with Jesus, yes. 
It was the best thing. They have, see, the best decision you can make is get on the right path. Yes. The best decision you can make is to get along with Jesus. The best decision you can make is to decide not to go along with the way your life been going and to make some changes. Yes. To say, Lord, I don't want my way no more. I want your way. That's yes. the best decision yes. you can ever make. Yes. 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 The Bible says he's the lies in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. Yeah. Now I know a lot of people in our society got a problem with the word meditation. It almost sounds foreign to us. Sounds like something from the Eastern religion. Sounds like something spooky. Sounds like crossing your legs and sitting looking at a candle trying to empty yourself. But in God, in Christianity, you don't empty yourself when you meditate. You feel yourself up. Yes. 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 Fill me up, Lord. You fill yourself up. when you. And here's the thing most people don't recognize. you always meditating on something anyway. Mm -hmm. You already, I told the saints not long ago, I said, do you know how to worry? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to fret? Yeah. Do you know how to be anxious about that bill that you know you ain't got no money to pay? Well, then you know how to meditate. Yes. Because the same way that you focus on something negative until it can worry you out your frame. Until it can drive your pressure up and get you all messed up. Mm -hmm. It's the same way you can meditate and put that pressure down. Mm -hmm. The same way you can meditate and put your nerves at ease and see a blessing come into your life. Amen. Do you hear me? I had the saint stand up not long ago. I said, anybody ever had psychosomatic symptoms? Psychosomatic symptoms is when... They don't know why you're breaking out in this rash, but it, but you, you're, there ain't no physical reason, but your mind is so stressed out that you're developing ulcers and you're developing rashes and you're seeing physical manifestations of something that is stressing you out mentally or spiritually. And if you have the power, good God Almighty, to manifest physically in your body, a visible sign of what you're thinking about. How much more can you manifest a healing in your life yes. if you will meditate on the right thing? If meditating on your fears can cause rashes and ulcers to flare up, then meditating on your faith can cause them to go away. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying on today? I know this is right because I've experienced it myself. I've seen it in others, and I experienced it my own self three times. Ain't no more pills, ain't no more medications to this day. Been prescribed them, but don't need them no more. Good God. Amen. I say they've been prescribed, but I don't need them because I meditated on the right thing. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Can I get yes. a witness? Yes. Amen. Amen. I got a witness right here. I meditate on, prescribe me the purple pills. Mm -hmm. Prescribe me all kinds of medicine and took all kinds of tests and said, we don't know what's wrong with you, but here's some pills. Amen. And so I, I got tired of them doctors. I went to Dr. Jesus. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. He wrote me a prescription that Woo! I, instead of a medication, he gave me a meditation. And when I meditated on what he gave me, good God Almighty, yes. hallelujah, I didn't need what they prescribed me no more. Mm -mm. Says, and in this law, he doth meditate yes. day and night. Yes. You see, you ain't going to be blessed in your life until you're blessed in your soul. No. You see, what people don't realize is we live life from the inside out. You live life from the inside out. Right. You live life. Everything you do in your body is based on what you believe in your soul. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so if you if you got a bad habit in your body, mm -hmm. you gotta fix the mindset in your soul. Mm -hmm. And so when you want to be blessed, you got to not only change your behavior. You got to change your internal vocabulary. Do you get me? You got to change your self talk and what's going on on the inside before you see a change on the outside. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. 
Now the blessed man, the blessed woman has roots. Mm. And their roots grow deep. There's another scripture in the book of Psalms that says, He who is planted in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some folk think they're going to grow, grow to be spiritual giants and, and, and not be planted in God's house nowhere. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of renegade Christians nowadays. A lot of individualistic Christians, a lot of American dream Christians think they're going to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. They're just going to listen to a message or listen to a preacher and go off and do their own thing, say a quick prayer, and God going to bless them. Well, let me explain something to you. God don't bless nothing that he ain't already doing. Amen. Look, you, you are Johnny come lately. God was already on the scene before you was born. Yes. And he had a plan before you got here. Yes. yes. And what he's doing is what he's blessing. Mm -hmm. When you write a grant, when you apply for a job, if you have any sense whatsoever in, in your response to when they ask you why you want what you're asking for, you'll say something similar to what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I right? Yes. You're right. In the grant, they're telling you that they are an organization who believes this and is trying to accomplish this. Now you're going to write a grant, you're going to fill out an application, and you're going to say that you're trying to do something different and think they're going to support it. But people do it all the time with their prayers. They tell God, I'm going over here to do this. Now I want you to bless it. God said, but I'm over here doing this, and this is what I'm blessing. Now, if you go over there, you on your own. And so many people right now are on their own asking God to bless what they're doing, but not doing what God is blessing. Yes, yes, yes. God is blessing the church. Yes, yes. God is blessing the proclamation of the gospel. Yes. God is blessing folk who come and give and serve and live for God. Mm -hmm. God is blessing. He's still in the blessing business. Yes, yes. The problem is people ain't about God's business. Come on. And if you ain't about God's business, God can't bless your business. That's right. Amen. 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 The way of blessing. See, there's a, there's a way that seems right to a man. You think it's right what you're doing. You think you're living a life that's going to get you what you want. That somehow it's just going to all work out. Just because the universe smiles on you. Well, let me explain something to you. The universe ain't got no personality. That's right. God does. Yes. The universe ain't got no power. God does. And things only line up for those whom God wants it to line up. Yes. And if you ain't in the way of blessing, you are out of the way of blessing. Yes. Do you hear me? I'm going to do all I want to do with my life and expect God to bless it. You fool. Amen. The Bible says right here, you ain't in the way. Nope. You are not in the way of blessing. It goes on to say, his leaf also shall not with him. Whatsoever he do shall prosper. See, see, now someone might take issue with that and say, well, everything that Christian folk do, everything that believers do don't prosper. Well, I will argue with that. Because I done found out that even the things that don't work out the way that I want them to work out still prosper me. That's right. Well, woo, when I surrender to God, the things that I'm trying to do that he didn't necessarily direct me to do, but I surrender it to him anyway, he'll still bless it even though it fall apart. See, now I fall apart, and while it's crumbling, something else will catch it and pick me up and take yes. me in a whole other direction that yes. I didn't even expect that's more blessed than what I was trying to do. Yes, 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 yes. I done found out that when you walk in and do it for God, that even though you fall, you're still getting raised up. Yes, yes. When yes. folks set traps for you, it's, it's an opportunity to promote you. Yes, yes. I done found out that when you serve with God, folks try to hurt you, and they wind up helping you. Good God Almighty. Yes. Can I get away? I just, I just had folk try to hurt me and turn around and help me. Try to ruin one house and mess around and facilitate me getting another house. Good God Almighty. Y'all don't hear me up in here. Bless it! It's a man who walked on nine accounts of a godly. 
Do you hear me? Who don't stand in the way of sinners, nor get comfortable with some scoffers, with some scorners, with some folk who ain't got no respect for God. Look, if you want to prosper with God, you got to you got to do what God says do, and that's just it. Amen. Amen. That God God ain't changing His rules for you. God ain't gonna change His His ain't gonna turn the whole world and all the principles that He established upside down to make an exception for you. I'm gonna say that again. God ain't making no exceptions. Jesus said, I'm the way. Mm -hmm. I'm the truth. Yes. And I'm the life. And if you try to get the guy in it of the way, you are a thief and a robber. Mm -hmm. And you will be dealt That's with the as such. That's the word. If you try and be blessed any other way than God's way, you are a thief and a robber. Yes. If you're trying to prosper any other way than God's way, you are a thief and a robber. Yes. His least also shall not with whatsoever he do of shall prosper. Mm. Amen. Good God Almighty. Yes. Whatever you do when you're walking with God is going to prosper. Mm. Of course not. Even what you're doing ain't prosper, it's still prospering for you because he worked all things together for your good. Yes. Yes, that's right. I know a man got fired, it was for his good. When he got fired, he saw the business. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I remember when I couldn't find the job. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord, he knows I was trying. Mm -hmm. Heard all kinds of foolishness like overqualified. But all that did was make me go do something that blessed me better than a job. Yes, yes. Caused me to go start my own business. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Now the business I done started that paid way more than the job ever could. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And I'm telling the truth. Amen. Praise God. The ungodly are not so. Are not what? They're not like the blessed man. They walk in the counsel of the ungodly. They stand up in the way of sinners and they sit with the scornful. Yeah. They are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. What is shaft? Shaft is the husk that's left from a seed. It's not, it's not it don't do nothing. It ain't, it's good for nothing. And so in Jesus' day, you know, when Jesus was talking, he talked about, you know, some would, he would come with his winnowing fork. Well, a winnowing fork is when they would, they would throw the, the husk up in the air and the wind would catch it and the seeds would fall down and they would separate the husk from the seeds. You see? And so God is saying that a, a wicked person, an unbeliever, somebody who's not living for God is useless. Useless. There are people listening to me right now, as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, they are useless. Good for nothing. Husk. When the wind blow, they gone. Good for nothing. Because they haven't received the seed of the word of God. You know, I told you on last week that one of the first things you got to do when you suffer is put your hands up, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I found out in my study, I, I, I used to pray like this, just out, out, of, out of just instinctively. I would pray and lift my hands up like this. And I didn't know that in the Middle East, that's how they prayed. That in the Middle East, in biblical times, they would pray not with their hands like this, but with their hands like this as if they are to receive. You see? And when you want to be blessed, you have to receive the seed of the word of God. I was so blessed yesterday when I looked at the scripture. I shared it with my wife. I had been looking at the scripture for years and hadn't seen what I saw yesterday. Because yesterday I seen not only what the scripture was saying, but that it was saying it to me. And until this word speaks to you, you ain't got no life in you. You ain't got no seed in you. Until you receive, you cannot conceive. And until you conceive, you can't give birth to nothing. Yes. 
That's why the Bible talks about believing and receiving. It's not enough to say, yeah, I believe that's true. You have to receive it for you. Anybody receive God's word on today? Amen. You got to say that word right there, that line, verse 3, is for me. Yes. I'm going to prosper in everything I do. That's what God wants for me. Until you start to speak in terms of what God wants. If that never comes out of your mouth, this is what God wants. You see, Romans tells you that you ought to be proving what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You can't do that until you start to consider what God wants. Amen. What does God want for you? He wants to bless you. But he ain't going to bless you doing whatever you want to do. He gonna bless you when you do what he wants you to do. And until you do what he wants you to do, you are not in the way of blessing. You can say whatever you want. You can name and claim whatever you want. It don't matter. Because your word don't have power. God does. Amen. Yes, yes. They are like the shaft which the wind drive away, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. You know when people begin to crumble, they begin to crumble before they ever judge. They crumble in their conscience when they make bad choices. Because as soon as you make a bad choice, you know it in yourself. God has given you a conscience. Even if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you know this is a bad decision, but you choose to do it anyway. Yeah. And from the inside out, you begin to crumble. You can't hardly look at yourself in the mirror the same way. Mm -hmm. Because you know that you're making bad decisions and you're crumbling from the inside out. Mm -hmm. you, you're, like, you're like the person who's building their life on sinking sand. Because you are making decisions that you can't even stand on. It gives way under you. You can't have no integrity. You can't have no dignity. Because you can't even, you can't even trust or believe yourself. You're ashamed of who you are as soon as you start making bad decisions. That's true. And it doesn't go away. It only compounds and multiplies with every bad decision. Mm. So you got to know how you work. Wow. And I don't have time to teach it right now. I taught a lesson several times on the anatomy of a believer. Mm -hmm. But when you understand how you work, you understand how you damage you. You see, if you go out here and you drive a car and you keep on driving and you never fill it up, you never get the oil change, you never change the spark plugs, you never do no maintenance to the car, you are damaging the car. Yes. Because you don't understand what it takes to keep the car working at optimal performance. Mm. And some people are damaging themselves mm. because they don't understand what it takes for them to operate at optimal performance. But God does. Mm. Yes. You're messing your own self up. The Bible says that some sins, when you sin, you are, you are, you are hurting your own self. You are doing damage to your own soul every time you sin. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Let me explain something to you. The Bible says that if your conscience condemn you, that God is greater than your conscience. Amen. So now if you condemn you, you ain't going to be able to stand before God. Amen. No sinners in the congregation of the right. That, let me tell you why some people don't go to church. Because they sinners. And they can't stand to be in the congregation of nobody righteous. Mm. You can say what you want. Wow. Just like somebody who ain't on the right path can't praise them. Somebody who ain't living right can't hang around for who are. Mm -hmm. The darkness scatters when the light shines. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. God set it up like that. God set it up so that light repels darkness. God set it up so that sinners don't like saints. God set it up so that a sinner can't stand to be in the congregation of the righteous. Stop begging folk to come to church when they done came and don't want to do right. Amen. 
Sometimes folk just ain't coming to church because they ain't ready to get right. Right. Come on now, I was there myself. Yes. I, was too. I said when I'm ready to get right, I'll come to church. But until then, leave me alone. That's yes. right. Yes. And that whole time I was saying that I was a fool that wanted to be blessed but couldn't. You ever find somebody who, who you can see it on their life? God love them so much, they just keep bumping their head, bumping their head. Knows what I said, God love them so much. They just, they seem to be accident prone. They seem to, every, everything is a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Today is the car, tomorrow is the house, then it's the job, then it's the, it's just back to back to back. It ain't because they Job and they righteous. Mm -hmm. It's because they ain't living right and God's trying to get their attention. He said to Israel, he said, I sent my prophets, then I sent some more. Then I did this, and then I then I held up the rain for you. That still didn't get your attention. Then I sent wild beasts up in there. Then I sent your enemies to come and, 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 and overtake you and put you under their foot. Then I just got through with you and I sent you out the land. Mm -hmm. And maybe when you're out the land for 70 years, maybe then you'll come to your senses. There's a scripture where God says he will pursue you with calamity. Mm -hmm. wow. God is so interested and invested. Let me tell you something. Don't nobody waste no time with nobody that they don't, they don't have no interest in. Mm -hmm. If calamity and, 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 and hard times and, 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 and mishaps seem to be pursuing you, you might want to check yourself. Mm. It might be God's love pursuing you. When God's love pursues you, things will sometimes go wrong when you ain't right. Mm -hmm. So it has to get your attention because as long as things go the way you expect them to go, you ain't fooling with God. Mm -hmm. But let something go wrong and now, oh God! There's a saying in the chaplaincy that there are no atheists in the foxhole. What does that mean? That means that when, when things get bad enough, everybody call on God. On yeah. some kind of God. Yeah. Everybody gonna call on God. You get somebody in a bad enough situation, I don't care how atheist they say they are, they're gonna say, oh God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, no. mm -mm. And when God get through pursuing you for evil, when you done had enough of bumping your head and stumping your toe, come on. Of heartbreak and heartache. Mm -hmm. Then, maybe then, you might come to your senses and choose the way of blessing. Amen. Praise God. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, mm -hmm. but the way of the ungodly mm -hmm. shall perish. You're either prospering or you're perishing. And it doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. All that matters is how you choose to move. You can move in the way of blessing or you can move in the way of curse. God is trying to tell you today how to have a fulfilled, meaningful, significant, and ultimately satisfying life. But you've got to make the choice. Jesus said many are called. See, God wants everybody to be saved, but only few are chosen because only few choose to respond. Mm. Loser sounded like he responded. Yes. Maybe loser seen where, where his life was headed. Maybe God has blessed you to see where people who make bad decisions like you making, where they end up. Consider the end of your way. Consider the end. Consider what people who live like you live end up. Mm -hmm. Consider where people who act and make decisions like you make it end up. Consider what people who do what you do end up. Maybe you consider where when it was headed. But in life, we're not always presented initially with the light, but with darkness. He had a bad example three years ahead of him. You probably had some bad examples in your life. Before you were presented with the truth of the light of the glorious gospel, you were probably presented with a whole lot of darkness. Yes. 
You see you folks smoking this and doing that and, and, and getting in all kinds of mess. And then here comes the truth. Then here comes the truth to save you. But you've got to make the choice. See, I love the Lord. I love the Lord because he saved me for myself. Yes. Good God Almighty. Yes. Yes. I love the Lord because he makes me my best. Yes. I love the Lord because he gives me hope and happiness in himself. I love the Lord. I love the Lord because there's no other way that I found on this earth to be so blessed and happy. The serving the Lord. Amen. Will you choose to love the Lord today? Yes. How long will you find yourself halting between two positions? God demands that sooner or later you make a choice. You're going to choose the way of the righteous and what God wants you to do or you're going to be carnally minded and choose death doing what you want to do. The choice is yours. It don't take an elaborate sermon. It don't take nothing special to say it. God has laid out the path before you to choose. And it's up to you. Before you try to praise God, make sure you're on the right path. Before you try to say that God is yours, make sure that you're his. Before you claim that you're going to heaven, make sure that heaven is already in your heart. You may today find yourself in perilous situations. You may today be in a place where you feel like your fate and your destiny is already sealed. But I want you to know it don't matter what they call you. It only matters what you choose. With every head bow and every eye closed. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on the day for this sharp, curt reminder that there is a way of righteousness. And there is a way of foolishness. Help us live our lives in such a way that you can bless us. Help us live our lives in such a way, oh God, that we're not asking you to bless what we're doing, but we're doing what you're blessing. And so we find ourselves in the path of life everlasting to the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray.